Welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 29. Today it is Royal Capital Lindell. If this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, I would recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the pinned tips comments. People can look over them for more tips for this area. Now we're going to go to Finger Reader Enya in the round table hold. We're going to buy uh, a set, a, like a piece of Radan's armour. Uh, we bought two. I think we bought the chest and the helm. But I think it, I think you just buy the chest. I think that's it really. But um, might as well buy the helm anyway. It's pretty good. Uh, I think we do buy the helm because we end up having to put it on at some point. But anyway, we're going to speak to Bok. Uh, and then we're going to go through his dialogue. Then we're going to hit I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to go through that dialogue, and then that will open up, give the gold zone needle to him, which will open up even more dialogue. To be clear, you only get that dialogue option if you have a piece of boss armor, which is why we needed to buy a piece of Redan's set. Yes. So now we went to, I've got a favor to ask. He asks if you can call him Lord. You say yes, you can call me Lord. Then, go surely should be happy for you. We get the my Lord gesture for doing that. We exhaust that bit of dialogue. Ha then we go to the next bit of dialogue, exhaust that. And then we give the option to give him a larval tier. Now then we're going to quit. We're going to go out of his dialogue. And then we're going to use the prattling pay. You are beautiful in front of him. And then he has a new bit of dialogue saying he heard a voice. And then we go, that's right. You're beautiful. And then he's like super chuffed. And now he won't die. Because if you give him the larval tier, he'll just fucking die. Right. Now we get the prattling pay. You're beautiful. Uh, near the Demi-Human Queen in Mount Gelmir, in case you missed it. So, these guys, now we're in the, uh, the, the capital ramparts. These are Envoys, and they can drop the, the, lo the Envoy Longhorn, Longhorn, rather. As you can see, this guy's got a long horn. You can drop that one, and then the ones with the short horn can drop the Envoy Horn, the shorter one. There's also a yeah. third secret one, a big giant horn, but there's no giant envoys in this area, so you can't get it just now. Yeah, the envoy's horn is not a great weapon. That's the one that the little ones drop. It's a basic hammer and generally not very good. The envoy's long horn, on the other hand, is a fantastic weapon. Its Ash of War is unique, and it's pretty much a one-shot melt machine for anything bigger than you. It's fantastic. I recommend giving that a go. All right, so we're just going through the capital ramparts, uh, just kind of on the beaten path, making our way downtown, killing all these guys. Now, we just uh, fought a page there. Uh, the pages can drop. So that's the guy that's wearing the hood that had the s dock and the, the bow. There's another one coming up here in the next room. Uh, but they can drop the... So the pages and the high pages can drop their armor set, that being the head, the garb, and the trousers. Apparently, they don't have gloves. And then they can both drop the red branch short bows as well. So this guy's a page. I think this one might be a high page. I can't. It's hard to tell. They look almost identical. No, the high pages are wielding a pulley crossbow. Oh, okay. So, so they're the ones that page. have the three round burst perfume bolts. These guys only fire single shots. So now we're going to jump off down onto some rooftops. Uh, and we jump off at this point here. And uh, there's a lot of... Lot of so, not very tricky jumps, but specific jumps, so pay very close attention to what it is that we're doing specifically. Uh, also, in case anybody's wondering how to get to Royal Capital at uh, Lindell, uh, we get there via the capital outskirts and shown at the end of the last episode. But you should be here already. But just thought I'd make yeah. sure to point that out. There are a couple of ways to get to Lindell. Um, you can go through Deep Root Depths, but we haven't done that area yet because it kind of sequence breaks a couple of quests. Um, it's very we off the that. beaten path and very not obvious, but you can get there that way. That is true. Yeah. Um, and just to make a point, you will not be able to enter Lindell if you have not defeated at least two Shardbearers. So that leading up to this point would be um, Godric, Radan, or Renala. I think there's a couple others you can fight. Um, or at least there's a couple other Remembrance bosses, but no other Shardbearers leading up to this point. Except Rykard, but we've specifically left him for a later stage in in the guide. So, now we've picked up the the rooftop items. We've done this little drop-off here. Pay very, close, pay very close attention to the specific roof we dropped off from. But there's a Lindell Knight here. As we've said many times before, the Lindell Knights can drop their equipment. 
So that being the helm, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves, they can drop the knight's great sword, the partisan, the great bow, or the golden great shield, just depending on the thing that they have equipped at the time. So we got that item on the ledge, and I think there is an imp head here. I think it's yeah, the, the dead one. Corpse. Yes. And, and one um, of the two that you get in a specific location. So there is th this fucking encounter here is one of the worst in the entire game because you get nothing for doing this. Uh, but it does give me time to say that there these are Lindell soldiers and there's also Lindell foot soldiers, which are the the worst looking guys. The soldiers can drop the helm, the circle, the gauntlets, the greaves. They can drop Lord Sworn straight sword, the war pick, the heavy crossbow, the Lord Sworn shield, or the brass shield. The brass shield is one that these guys are wearing the triangle ones. The Lord Sworn shield is the great shield, and then. The foot soldiers can drop the gilded foot soldier cap, the leather draped tabard, and then they can drop daggers, shorts, short swords, short spears, and soldiers' crossbows. Uh, yeah, so that's all the drops of these guys. And as you can see, this particular encounter is a fucking nightmare. And you don't get anything good for it. You get fucking nothing for it. But obviously we had to show you. And for all your effort, for all that, you get a fucking arterial leaf. That's it. So yeah, ignore this bit entirely. But now we get to move yeah. on, thankfully. Yeah, the next thing we'll be doing is heading through these big double doors over here. Um, this is actually the path of progress out of Lane Dell, but we are going to come and clear this area up, grab all the items, so when it comes to actually leaving Lane Dell out of the back door... Uh, we can pretty much just sprint straight for the lift. We don't have to worry about killing any of the enemies. We don't have to worry about collecting any of the items. But speaking of the enemies, we are fighting more Misbegotten. Yes, of which the Misbegotten's can drop the Iron Cleaver or the Misbegotten Shortbow. So the ones that fly can drop the Misbegotten Shortbow. Yeah, there's a couple of other enemies in this area. So there's some dogs. Um, as you're seeing right now, there's some perfumers. Um, a little bit further up, and there are also two, I think, Leonine Misbegotten's, um, who were previously bosses, and they can drop the Iron Greatsword, which is actually not a bad weapon for a more strength-focused build, which would take advantage of a Greatsword. It's a good weapon, but really hard to farm, because this is really the only place you can do it. And is it better than the Great Stars? Almost certainly not. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, coming up to the first one of those here... Um, that dog, by the way, friendly. Um, weird yep. esoteric Elden Ring knowledge for you. It's because the trigger to aggro that enemy is not in this load zone. So unless you actively hit it, it will never aggro. Weird. But in Very front cool, of it uh, was a perfume bottle, so definitely worth coming here to grab. And then we've got to head up the big staircase just on our right there. And then at the top, yes. there's another encounter. But for this one up here, I believe we can summon. And the logical thing to summon would obviously be the Mimic. Yeah, you, you can, for some reason, summon on these steps. Uh, this encounter, there is actually a lot of enemies here. So it is kind of, I would suggest, to summon. Because I have been killed on these steps. Just because of getting swarmed with a specific amount of like misbegottens and shit like that. Yeah, I think the biggest issue is that right there. The Perfumer and Leonine Misbegotten combo. I mean, that was a boss earlier in Altus. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So I as you said, really, the... they've really ramped it up. And so they were like, nah, we let you summon before. We're going to let you summon now. So the, the Leonine Misbegotten, like you said, can drop that in Greatsword. But the Perfumers, do I even have them here? They can drop their headpiece, gloves, perfumers, sarong, and trousers. Yes, they can. Apparently, I... There's so many different enemy types in this, apart from my list is a little bit incomplete. That's fine. That's why I'm here. That is why you're here. <laughs> so, there's, uh, walking, I know that there's um, one of the bigger misbegotten in that ditch, and that can drop the... Oh, fuck, what is it? This thing here. The... The long the haft long axe. Ha yes, you can drop the long haft axe. Not a bad weapon, actually. It's um, one of the longer great axes in the game. So if you did want to do a great axe run for whatever reason, that's not a bad pick, and this wouldn't be a bad place to farm it. 
Yeah, so the perfumers, you're right, they can drop the four pieces of their armor set, and then they can also shot, drop the perfumer's shield. Ah, yeah. But only if they're wielding it. Yeah. Which I don't think any of them were wielding the shield, but there you go. That's it for that bit, and that's all the drops for that bit as well. Yeah, and the next time we come here, we'll be on our way out of Landell, as I've said. But for now, I think we'll be going just to the right of the Great Road, which will lead us up a shortcut lift back to the very start of the area. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, Lindell's a pretty fun area. Um, it can certainly be a little bit overwhelming, particularly with all the, the jumps and items on the rooftops that I've missed entirely the first time, because again, it just doesn't seem like it's possible to really do that. But we're going to sneak past this Crucible Knight instead of fighting it, because why the fuck would we fight it? And we're going to kind of juke it a little bit, grab the Hero's Rune, and then just get the fuck out of here. Yeah, this is a trick you really ought to learn for this and any other Souls game, really. Is if you don't have to fight it, don't. Yeah, just leave oh, it alone. absolutely. That's part of the that's um, part of the ultimate guide. Is uh, some things literally just aren't worth your time fighting, and that Crucible Knight is one of them. For sure, yeah. Um, I will say, actually, a um, little cool piece of speed run attack. You can actually, through a series of careful jumps, jump off of this ledge here and land on the big domed roof of the building that the Crucible Knight was in. Um, it's tricky to do, but you will be able to find some very solid tutorials for how to do that online. It's fun because it lets you get through Lane Dell in a couple of minutes as opposed to nearly an hour. So now we are heading on this. We've done all the kind of off the beaten path moments, and now this is like us back on the beaten path, which is that um, instead of doing the jump off the ramparts, now we're taking the lift down to the other bit of Lindell from very close to where we jumped off onto the roofs. So there's still a few more roof jumps uh, to do. Um, this one being particularly tricky, actually. And you have to do it in this order also. There's like because you, you can't really jump back. I know if you go to one of these roofs, you can't do you can't jump back properly. So yeah. Make sure you do things in the order we're doing it. So there is quite a lot of perfumers here, so I suppose if you wanted to there's the perfumer shield right there. That guy was wielding it. I like you said, there are a fair few of them. So if you wanted their armor set for any reason, um this would be the place to get that. Another page there. Uh, there was also a few commoners. Uh, the commoners can drop the headband, the garb, the shoes, and the weathered straight sword. Not that you'd ever want one. <laughs> yeah. So another perfume bottle. Uh, that I mean, as much as we don't really use perfumes in this guide, there is a point where we do use one extensively uh, because it really comes up. So yeah, it is worth actually having the perfume bottles for the use case that we use it for. And we got another seed bed curse on that body that was up the stairs. And we need that for the Dung Eater's quest. Well, we specifically don't need that, but if you are doing the Dung Eater's quest, you definitely need it. Yeah. Uh, but um, officially, well, we actually, officially we don't do the Dung Eater's quest. You, don't, you actually don't need to, to platinum the game. As much as you get an, a, an ending from the Dung Eater, uh, it's not tied to a trophy. So you literally don't need to do it. So it is just better to just not ever do his ending. The official stance is, watch his ending on YouTube. It is the same thing. So, <laughs> break, break, it literally, like it sounds like I'm making a joke. It's it's literally the same thing. So we're going to uh, try and uh, get the get the jump on this guy. See, this this is one of the Lindell Knights that's wielding the Partisan, as you can see there. Which is a slightly less common weapon for them to use, seemingly. But... Um, I'm going to kill that yeah. guy, and then we're going to head back around, because this is another room that can be a little bit tricky, so we're going to do our best to kill these commoners first, and then we're going to whip out our bow to kind of bait the enemies out in this room, because getting getting ganged up on in this room is not a fun process. I think that's actually a high page. I think. It is indeed, has the pulley crossbow in hand. Um, these guys are exceptionally deadly with that bow, so... If you see them readying a shot, be ready to dodge, because if the three-round burst hits you, it will do a lot of damage. Yeah, so what can end up happening is you can get caught up fighting the page, and then these perfumers can just spray you with their, like, perfume spray attack. Um, 
and that can really, really stack damage up on you uh, to the point where it'll just kill you out of nowhere. So you really want to be careful with that room specifically. I've died quite a lot of times in that room, actually, so... Yeah, you really don't want to get hit with the 1 million by Paco or Raban. <laughs> no, no, you really don't. Bad <laughs> fragrance burns the eyes. <laughs> I'm sure I called yeah, they... somebody out watching this video. Um, yeah, you definitely have. <laughs> picking up a golden rune there back on the Grand Road. So we've completed that front loop, if you will. We've got yes. the shortcut. We've done all the rooftops. Now it's on to the, uh, the central portion. And the first thing to do is come into this room, grab this item, and then run. Because there's nothing else in here except a bunch of dogs. If we were to take a right just now, we would head to those big double doors with all the misbegotten. So this is the same road that we're on. Um, and we're gonna just, we're not gonna fight this thing just yet because we're gonna grab this grace here and that will reset its position and then we can fight it in a minute or like 15 seconds or, you know, might as well get the grace first before fighting it, you never know. Yeah, saves you the trouble of running back if it, you know, spams the the laser beams at you and catches you in a corner or something deft. Ah, exactly. Now, it is an air tree avatar, so again, as much as the it's, it is easy enough to take care of. If you are somehow struggling, you can just stack fire damage. Uh, again, um, Flaming Strike is probably our official stance on the best possible thing that you could do to, to stack damage into these things. Uh, flaming Strike is truly, truly incredible against these things. But um, yeah. our stance is uh, you just roll into its attacks. Um See? You'll see that strategy in full effect right here. This is the one attack you need to get away from, and this is the laser beams I was talking about. They yep. hit exceptionally hard, they stun lock you. Yeah, that can cause you some problems, especially in a tight environment like this, but other than that, these aren't too difficult to handle at this point. Honestly, I, I will admit that my performance is shocking. Uh, I, I do understand that this, <laughs> this is not doing a great job at highlighting how to fight these things. Um, the better option would be, honestly, to have just put on Flame and Strike. But I just couldn't be arsed and, it, and I made it harder for myself. Flame and Strike, dodge into its attacks, aside from this one. It really is spamming this one at me, to be honest. This is kind of egregious. This one does, and I don't know what it is about this one specifically that makes it do that, but it seems to use that attack a lot more often than the other ones. If you want a good example of using Flaming Strike to delete these things, just hang on a little bit for the... Uh... Deep Root Depths episode, because there's one at the start of there, and it's gone as quick as it appears. Yeah, or even the Halley Tree episode, we use that there as well. But oh, yeah, yeah. Flaming Strike is is the way to kill those things. We have Flaming Strike, you put it on the Great Stars, it's fucking gone. Like, it's to, to, the, to the point, it's actually hilarious how much damage you're doing to it. This encounter so, on the stairs is yet another tricky one, so your best bet is to bait these two Landell soldiers down so you don't have to fight them at the same time as fighting a Landell knight. Correct, correct. Because, you know, this is kind of, it's, it's, it's not the same as that stupid Arteria leaf encounter, but it's similar as the reason why we we're baiting it. Um, you saw it this. using the Thunderbolt Ash of War there? Yes. Um, we will be picking that up in this episode and from this point forward and certainly this point backwards if you've been taking our advice um, Knight's Cavalries are no longer a threat. Yes, Thunderbolt is absolutely the way of killing Knight's Cavalries. It's almost funny how effective it is against them. They really just can't get away from it. Yeah, yeah, and that's their whole shtick. But anyway, so yeah. I've got so this this whole bit is a bit of a slog. Actually, there's a ton of enemies on this um, upper path, I guess. Don't, don't know what you call it, but we kind of want to bait them out as much as possible because you really can get swarmed by some fairly difficult enemies. Ultimately, um, I don't I don't know what the fuck is going on with this guy. He was really trigger happy with that attack. I presume it's to do with the way that uh, we just got hit with a great arrow, by the way, because there is a great bow wielding Landell Knight just further down the avenue here. Yes. Which is why we're trying to pull them onto the stairs so that enemy can't hit us. Um, but I assume it's to do with how 
Thunderbolt actually tracks its target, I assume it um, points an invisible tracer at the target, and because the tracer was colliding with the terrain, it was hitting the terrain instead of us. There's, there's still just a lot of killing enemies at this point, ultimately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this lane down night giving us uh, a bit more trouble than some of the others. And for this reason, because that really hurts. That took about half of our health off in one shot. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that hurt. <laughs> then you've got this guy just fucking peppering us. Like, shut, just shut up. Just fucking shut up. He wishes he was like that Giga Chad Knight. He couldn't draw that bow. Are you kidding? No, Look no, at him, no, tiny. no absolutely not. <laughs> So this next Maybe. bit we're about to do, uh, you do not get anything from killing this lion. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab these items here, and then we're just fucking off. <laughs> As I said, learn which fights to pick and which ones to just completely avoid. Yeah, I think what we do is we quit out to, to drop the aggro. Either that or, ah, we do this, yes. So we can do this and jump onto this little dome part here. I cannot believe that the lion chased us to this dome, by the way. That's genuinely <laughs> crazy. Um, but I think we just run back up to the top of the stairs and then quit in and out. I don't know. By looking at it, there's no cut. We don't quit in and out. We just go, fuck it. And then just, just, keep, just keep going. <laughs> we don't even bother quitting. God knows where these two came from, by the way. I think one at the bottom blew its horn. And so everything in the catchment area now knows where you are. That must have been what happened. I assume so, because where did they come from? Where were they? Look at him running. He saw the great stars and he's he's got the fear. It is funny that his bubble shield actually kept him alive. Aye, for that brief moment, so he got searing, agonizing pain for a couple more seconds. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's a ton of enemies. <laughs> there's so many on this path, so you really do want to be careful. Thankfully, if you've been following the guide, you are at a very, a, a very acceptable level and equipment level point um, where you can make light, light enough work, you know? The Great Stars really, really pull their weight in this area so much. They're so fucking good. I mean, they pull their weight everywhere. Um, I've talked There's kind of nothing they can't do. There really is yeah. anything they can't do. They're just so versatile. I think the only thing you could really say that's negative about them is because it's a great hammer, it swings kind of slow. But what does that matter if you two-shot everything? Yeah. Like if, you, like, if you're hitting them with the jump attack before they're even really doing anything. It, Jesus, fucking so many enemies. <laughs> it's just keep yeah. so many. To the point where we're just completely out of blue flasks. Yeah, we're just... It's still, like, even being out of blue, look what Ground Slam just did. It just staggered both of them. Yeah, yeah, that's the one really cool thing about Ground Slam, is it will still stagger. So what we want to do is just, like, want to uh, run to one side, and then as it's doing its fire attack, go to the other to be able to avoid it. Yeah, these wounded gargoyles seem to drop a disproportionately large amount of runes for whatever area they're in, and they do yeah. respawn. So, at this mid-game stage, if you're feeling like you're short on runes, come and kill a few of those. There's a lot of them in deep root depths. And now, we are just heading down this path here, and this should take us back to that main road area. Yeah, we'll be able to jump off um, onto the roof of one of the carriages, I think that was in the main avenue. Um, yeah. And I think there's... Is it a holy grease? Well done. Yeah. I don't and know why I... that was like an anchor item. I had that in my head that that was a holy grease and that's like the, the signifier that we're done with that section. <laughs> yeah, so that's it for the whole, like, the, the, the road and the upper road part. So I think now we're going to make a start on the kind of sewer area bit, I think. Yeah, like the canal ways. Yeah. Almost. Shut up! Yeah, this this must have been the guy that blew the horn that pissed the others off. It must have been. Yet another one with a bow. Do not get hit by that because it really hurts. God, great stars putting in the work again. 
no. And the, the eye frames that you get as well is kind of interesting because you can stagger stuff to get reposts quite a lot. And as a result, gave us the eye frames that so we, we, we didn't get blasted by perfume. It's like tech in a fighting game. You're doing frame yeah. perfect dodges. So this takes us to... Okay, so there was that grace that was past the air tree avatar. Um, and then there's like a doorway. We specifically didn't go through that doorway. And this is now on the north side of Lindell. That's uh, a bit more destroyed than the south side, seemingly. So that's where we get the Omen Smirk Mask, which is quite cool, as it gives us two strength, and that is the last part of the Omen set. Yeah, it's strange that they split it up, and it's also yeah. strange that they gave you three um, Great Omen Killer Cleavers, but we just picked up, I think, the final armor upgrade we ever take advantage of. Yes, this is Lionel's set, and it's fucking good. It's really, really good. But as you can see, we are a little bit overburdened at this point. So yeah, what we end up having to do, I think, is we swap out for Radan's helm for a little while. Uh, no, we just put there the... I think we take the dagger off and put the air tree's favor back on. Ah, That's sure. just enough. Um, and also we've got enough souls to level up our vigor. We're almost at 60, so we're almost at the vigor goal, which that's really, really good. And now we are heading into this... God, I, I, I guess we're going to call it Aqueduct because FromSoft loves an Aqueduct. They love Aqueducts almost as much as the ancient Roman did, Romans did. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, for anyone listening, um, if you haven't thought about Cracked the Roman pot. Empire Sorry. at all today, um, now you have. But yeah, we picked up a crackpot there. Very relevant. So now an ulcerated tree spirit is about to burst out the ground. Uh, we've fought so many at this point that you really should have your own technique down for these guys. There's, I don't even think it's possible that this could even be the first one that you've ever fought. Um, watch out for that attack specifically. Uh, jump and L1s are going to be your friend. But you could have indeed used uh, Blood Flame Blade plus Wild Strikes as a great combo for these guys. Um... Uh, Flaming Strike, again, would have deleted this thing also, because they are weak to fire. Um, but otherwise, it's like, you don't even need all that shit, because you just avoid that attack and just spam your jumping L1s at it, and then you don't need to re-change your fucking Ashes of War at a grace. I mean, you could just be using Flaming Strike in general. Most enemies are at least vulnerable to fire, if not yeah. directly weak to it, so Flaming Strike is just a good option. Like a general purpose one, similar to Lion's Claw or um, Ground Slam. Totally Something obvious. I will say about the items in Lane Dell, actually, is this episode's kind of an important one, in that the items in Lane Dell will disappear after a certain point in progression, so you are really going to want to pick all these up. This is true. This is very true. That guy actually gave me a little bit more of a... I just kept missing the jump attacks somehow. But you're not going to do that. It's all good. And if you do keep missing the jump attacks, well, you've got Flaming Strike, so it's all good. <laughs> you also have a doorway nearby and Rotten Breath, so... Yeah, if um, it really comes to it, you can just do that. Uh, this room is, again, another nightmarish encounter because of the amount of lightning damage in here. So if you were so inclined, you could put the Bolt Drake Talisman on. It might just let you edge it out against these guys if they're causing you problems. No idea. A stone sword key. God, I just did not know. I had no idea. The thing that gets me about that one is it's locked behind a cage door that you don't need a key for, and that's rare in these games. Yeah, yeah, I've always wondered that as well. It's like, it's just... <laughs> so that was a shortcut that is completely irrelevant. I can't even remember where it takes you. It takes you back to the grace just after the Erdry avatar. Ah, right, yes, yes. That's where that is. Does. So this is more of that classic Souls cyclical level design where it loops back in on itself over and over. Um, the enemies in this area, skeletons, by the way. Yes, but um, these all these particular skeletons seem to be the ones that have the spear, which they don't drop anything. Nice. Convenient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, the ones that have the spear 
Nothing. So here comes a... the trickiest jump in the area. This is probably either the or the second trickiest jump in the game. Uh, it's quite hard to get over this gap. There's the black bow. Pretty cool. Not as good as the pulley bow, but as what it is. So, there you go. So, I I don't know why I struggled so much against that jump. That footage made it look pretty easy. But, uh, yeah, there is indeed a golden rune 12, which I guess is fairly sizable, so worthwhile picking up. And now we're going to just run past all these fucking guys and um, just drop down on uh, this little road next to the aqueduct bit, Guilty hood. I guess. And then we picked up the guilty hood. That's one of two locations you can get that the merchant on the slopes of Mount Gelmir also sells it. So if you do miss that one when the world event happens and um, these items become inaccessible, you can still get the guilty hood if you want it for whatever reason. So this is the bit that we initially jumped down to in the aqueduct. Uh, and up those stairs takes you to the room with that Lindell Knight. But now we are heading to the other direction. And this is kind of more so into the sewer area. Where there's rats and hands. You know what? Given the amount of times we've said it in this episode, um, Flaming Strike is good versus the Avatar. It's good versus the Tree Spirit. It's good versus the Soldiers. It's good versus hands, rats. Everything in this area, Flaming Strike would be good against. So, honestly, just use Flaming Strike. Yeah, probably. I would probably keep um, Ass Slam on, but then on the offhand... Uh, on the offhand great stars, I would probably put Flaming Strike on rather than um, Prayerful Strike. If I, if I was to make a retroactive change. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable swap out. Like, the, the offhand great stars really does sort of become a utility belt for different Ashes of War throughout yes, this. Yes, yes. The main hand really swaps between Lion's Claw, um, which is good, by the way. Um, Lion's Claw and the Grits. Uh, Ground Slam, sorry. It just so happens that given the amount of enemies in this area, Crown Slam is probably going to be a little bit better than Lion's Claw. Because they are almost functionally identical. Yeah, in terms of their effect on target, so to speak. Um, we picked up a Lost Ash of War there. Um, if we haven't explained that before, Lost Ashes of War allow you to duplicate an Ash of War. So if you particularly like an Ash of War, but say you wanted two weapons in different flavours, so Fire and Lightning, for example, you could have them have the same Ash of War with uh, um, two different infusions on two different weapons. Lost right. Ashes of War are kind of rare and very useful when they pop up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, oh god, those are those. These fucking guys. Yeah, these guys can drop their stupid black dumpling headpiece. The very rare black dumpling headpiece that gives yeah. you a buff if you get madness. Um, we picked up an Earth Steel Dagger. Uh, we got one of those earlier in the game from Kenneth Height, so you can actually power stance a pair of them, and they're very good with Sacred and Flame Art infusions. They take Faith Scaling really well, because they are the only dagger with inherent Faith Scaling that can be infused. Very cool. Uh, so this particular stretch of map is uh, the door at that grace from the, the, just past the air tree avatar, that's where this road is. It would lead to the dragon's wing or whatever. There's a bunch of Lindell knights. Uh, I guess we ultimately probably could just kill. Uh, we're not gonna... The, 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 the progression for this area is to go up the dragon's wing, but there's still a few more items that we're gonna get before we, we do that. So this is now effectively where the omen killer was. Just a little bit further ahead. So that's where we get Thunderbolt yes. from. Separated by a wall of debris. You can't actually jump over it. You have to path the way that we did. Yes, yes. But this is, in terms of, like, orientation on the map, we're ki we are kind of back there, sort of, but we have to yeah, do the look yeah, around. Yeah. So, yeah, we talked about it extensively already. This item is above the um, sort of open sewer area that we were we were in previously where the hands were this little section overlooks the um arena with the all story tree spirit and we've talked yes. about it extensively i was gonna say but thunderbolt great versus the knight's cavalry and again generally applicable it's just a really reliable projectile attack yeah yeah Good no, no, for sure 
so uh, yeah, so now we're going to head to the subterranean shunning grounds. Uh, but what I'm just going to reiterate again: if you are fighting the um, the Black Riders, the Knights Cavalries, you obviously you put Thunderbolt on whatever weapon you want it on. But in your other weapon, we suggest having the Icon Shield, and your other hand rather suggest having the Icon Shield, and then you can also stack the like the Lightning Scorpion Charm to get even more Lightning Damage. You can also put on the Lightning Damage Buff uh, Cracked Tier for your Physic Flask to really stack the Lightning Damage, and just block the Cavalry's attack, and then cast a Lightning Bolt, um, and then obviously because the Cavalry's tend to kind of dance about and sort of run around and not attack you lightning bolt can just deal damage when they're fucking running about and it means you don't need to chase after them and you're not missing attacks you can just keep your guard up and just spam lightning bolt at them and that is the technique for killing them and it really really takes the edge off i will fucking say yeah the next time you see that uh see us fight a knight's cavalry it's gonna be in the um i think it's dragon barrow will be the next one that we fight and we use it there, and it works so well that we just continue using it for the rest of them. So, what we went to there was the subterranean shunning grounds. That is the underground sewer area. That is what we're going to do next. But we're not going to do that area just now, because we still have to do the rest of Lundell. But as we're there, we might as well grab the grace. That way we can just warp back to there when we need to. So, this was probably actually a bit of a mistake here. Um... What we should have done here, actually, strictly speaking, what we should have done is put on... What is the Ash of War called that makes you invisible again? Um, Assassin's Gambit. Right. Do we have that just now? I think we do. Um, we have access to it at this point. You buy it from Warmaster Banal in the Volcano Manor. Or the Shack, um, depending where you are. He doesn't game. sell it at the Shack. Oh, oh only... In, okay, so uh, in Volcano Manor... If you buy uh, Night Shadow, was it? Is that what you said? Um, Assassin's Gambit, sorry. Assassin's Gambit. Where the fuck did I get Night Shadow from? Assa if you put Assassin's Gambit on a dagger, you can actually... You could have cast it before you go on the Dragon's Wing, and the Lindell Knights just won't even see you. And that means you don't need to dodge... Um, you don't need to dodge arrows when you're going up the Dragon's Wing. Charged R2 is from the Great Stars showing their worth there, um, doing enough damage to stagger it in two hits. It's an incredibly reliable attack, and there's plenty of ways to buff the attack um, attack damage of charged R2s. Specifically, the uh, the Axe Talisman is a fantastic pickup, and you get it very early on, and it just pays dividends throughout the entire game. So here we are at the next Grace. Um, yeah, I think we're probably about halfway through this area, maybe just slightly further than halfway. And, um, yeah, I guess just progressing. Like, uh, there's just not a lot specifically happening right now. This area is pretty big. There's a lot of, there's a lot of running about. Here's some more oracles. And then we're going to pull this lever, which I think opens the door below us. Yeah, that's right. So it's technically a shortcut, quote-unquote, that we just never use. But um, if you remember the stairs that had the two... They had the Lindell Knight up at the top, and the two Lindell soldiers that we used the bow to bait down. That's the door that opens using pulling that lever. Yeah, picking Grab up the, the cane, cane sword. A hundred percent, one of the used. worst straight sword in the game. <laughs> Definitely, somebody thought we missed it as well. Yeah, probably because we ran straight. Well, past like it. ran past it, and we were like, yeah. ah, we're not even going to pick that item up. We're going to use it as bait. <laughs> So yeah, here's another gargoyle. Um, just like the other gargoyles, I think just the jumping L1s are good enough. Uh, Lion's Claw, very, very good against this thing. Insane. I'd really, honestly, you should probably put Lion's Claw on at the Grace and just spam Lion's Claw at this thing. That'll, make, that'll probably be the easiest method. But strictly speaking, we do so much damage to it that it's not really a big issue. But if you are having an issue, Lion's Claw is the way to go for something like this. This one in particular might give you some problems because of the uneven terrain. It makes yes. figuring out where it's going to land after its attacks a little harder because if it just clips a piece of terrain that's slightly higher, you're not going to be able to hit him anymore. Real pain in the ass. But now we have enough golden seeds to upgrade our flask. That's pretty cool. 
So definitely worthwhile just upgrading it just there. So now we've got 12 Crimson Flasks. I think four, almost 14 or 15 overall. Out. Almost, yeah, almost. Uh, you get 14 in total, I think. If that's the case, then I think we are maxed out then, because we've got two Crimson Flasks. Oh, we got two Cerulean and 12 Crimson. Yes, two blue flasks, yeah. Fucking oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so that great, um, that golden seed there gave us max flasks. So if you follow the guide exactly, you will have enough golden seeds at this point to have um, full charges on your uh, crimson flask, which is nice. God, there is a lot of Lindell Knights here. So yeah, you want to be careful of this because obviously one of them is just spamming the bow at you. So we're going to try and bait the the partisan one around, first of all. Yeah, and unfortunately this is one of the encounters that you can't really avoid because it does have a specific drop. This one in particular has a specific drop, and it is the... Um, can't remember its name. Gravelstone uh, Seal. Gravelstone Seal. Yeah, that boosts the uh, dragon incantations, but not the ones that summon a dragon head. So those are the dragon communion incantations. The ones this boosts is the dragon cult incanda incantations. And the way to remember the difference is if it summons some kind of aspect of a dragon, it's dragon communion. If it does lightning damage, it is dragon cult. That's so needlessly complicated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is nice that they give you like items to specifically boost certain things. If you want to theme a build around, say, the dragon cult incantations, you have the perfect casting tool for it. Right so, there, we just picked it up. Bit of a weird jump, but uh, off the off the claw, and then onto the rooftop, and then you go from the rooftop up to here, and then there's a stone sword key and a smith and stone six. So, yeah, worthwhile getting. I mean, it's kind of worthwhile getting everything in this area. So, yeah, just a little bit of a speed up. We're not going to take that door. We're going to take this door instead. Um, you may get followed by some dogs here, so just be wary that they might come and hit you in the back. But as you can see... We're now in the round table hall. Yeah, familiar place. So that's we get the sanctified wet blade and the hammer from where Hugh would be. We get the buy my sword and a hero's rune from where Fia would be. Then on the round table itself, things a rune arc. Yes, well, big brain, well my brain so good. <laughs> What's this one then? Uh, uh, well, you've got time. I think it's a gesture. Coded sword. Oh, I'm a <laughs> failure. <laughs> Live with that. Um. <laughs> so the reason why we took that side entrance is, from what I'm aware, you can't get up here if you take the main entrance because the stairs are destroyed. So you have to take the side entrance and then drop down into the main entrance hallway type thing. Um, so it's kind of like a point and no return unless you run around the building again. Yeah, that's right. In and this here, would be... where the Dung Eater would be, yep. you will get an press. item for the Dung Eater's quest, which is... That just makes too much sense. It does make too much sense. I think the next two Seedbed Curses are both in Hallig Tree? Uh, I believe they are. Actually, yeah. Um, There is also one that you get from progressing the Blackguard Big Boggart's quest. Um, but that one is kind of optional. You only need five, and the game gives you a surplus. Oh, cool. So we get some more black key bolts, and then we got... Uh, it was a prayer book of some sort. Golden Order prayer book. So of course we give that to the Turtle Pope. We give all our prayer books and spell books to the Turtle Pope. Albrecht's armor set. He was the red invader we fought in the round table hold way back when. Um, the one who was using blood and frost against you. He was using your own spells against you. Yeah, quite literally, actually. Um, Prick. <laughs> yeah, except so, we used them better. Aye. So there's the flightless bird painting. Uh, so I think we get that. Oh, fuck. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure we pick it up soon ish, I think. I think we do, yeah. We clean but, that up at the end of uh, at the end of this part, if I'm not mistaken. But now we're about to do Bernal's quest. So remember, we're still doing the Recusant 
Volcano Manor quest. Um, and we won't finish that until Mountaintops of the Giants. But otherwise, uh, we do this invasion with Bernal. And obviously we've got uh, the, the Great Stars. Now, we actually forgot to put Wild Strikes on. Um, that would be the way to defeat these guys. Just forgot to do it at the Grace because you don't really need it. But if you are somehow struggling, then Wild Strikes would absolutely mince <laughs> both, both of these NPCs. Um, there's it might literally struggle nothing... a bit more against the Sorcerer, though, because he might try and just run away from you instead of coming at you. Maybe, but um, regardless, though, uh, Wild Strikes is by far the best way of killing NPCs. Awarded with the Raging Wolf armor. Um, anyone who saw the Elden Ring trailer way back when will be familiar with that armor set. It's the one that Trailer Man is wearing. <laughs> um, trailer Man? John Elden? Yeah, it's the one, it's the armor of John Elden Ring. Um, no, it's a pretty good armor set. Um, and you're getting the Stormhawk axe here. This is the axe that would be wielded by Nefeli Lu. You can get two of them by killing Nefeli, um, but the game gives you two of them anyway, so you never actually need to kill Nefeli. I don't know why you would want to anyway, but um, the Stormhawk Axe is an incredibly good weapon. Its Ash of War is effectively Stormcaller, but better, and Stormcaller is already really good. So... Um, I actually used Stormcaller a couple of times, because it turns out to be the best option for certain things in the game, which is cool. Yeah, for so, those who uh, would be unaware, I did a run parallel to the guide run where I tried a bunch of other things out to see if I could find anything that would make the guide easier. And I was using a Great Stars, but I was also using Stormcaller instead of Ground Slam. I used it as my Ground Slam. It really is that versatile. So you might remember, uh, you might recognize this place rather. And this is where the, uh, the trap the, the chest trap in the Weeping Peninsula sends you to. Now, we've already picked up that item. Uh, if you go towards the golem and then head to the right of the golem, there is a chest with the Blessed Jew Talisman in it, but we've already picked up. So, now we've done Bernal. Um, we got the... Uh, I can't... I, can't I missed the name of that particular Ash of War, but we get that Ash of War off him. But also, remember, you could have bought and probably should have bought Assassin's Gambit off him. Well done. <laughs> the item uh, he gave us was Gelmir's Fury, by the way. It's a flame it, yes. sorcery. So this is the Flightless Bird painting location. And that is Fire's Deadly Sin. Effectively, immolation for those of you who played Dark Souls 2. Set yourself on fire, deal damage to enemies you near. Very cool. And now we're back to Lindell Royal Capital and heading along the beaten path. Um, there's, quite, there's a lot of nothing, so we're just kind of... Yeah, there's, there's, uh, these guys are now just regular enemies, uh, although like, they were never that hard to begin with, to be fair. No, um, they can drop their full armor set, though. The helmet, the cloak, the boots, and I think the gauntlets as well. Uh, um, yes, and the battle hammer. But that only drops from the one that is wielding. Yeah. Only drops from this. They game. can also drop the duelist's great axe, which the other one was wielding. Um, and an interesting thing about the armor set is if the snakes on the arms are exposed, so that's the altered armor, um, then enemy aggression will be heightened towards you. It effectively gives you the same effect as the Shabriri's War of Talisman. Huh. Cool. So yeah, you can get Bok to ed I mean, you can edit the armor yourself. I think you need Bok to edit boss armor specifically. Actually, I think you can edit boss armor yourself as well. Bok really has no use other than being adorable and thinking he's ugly. Is it? Is it just if you have the golden needle, you can edit boss armor then? Yeah. Wow. All right, fuck <laughs> Bok. Should have gave him the larval tier. Just stomp him to death. <laughs> I'll tell you, oh. if it was up to me, my pals would have killed Bok with hammers, like, episodes ago. But, um... <laughs> Picked up the Ritual Shield Talisman and we've just grabbed the uh, Starfist Star there. That is an exceptional weapon. 
a contender for top 10. It does so much damage, it inflicts bleed, it breaks stance hilariously easily. But here is Sage Corrin. So yeah, we're going to speak to him. The Noble Gold Masks quest. Now, we have the option to give him a prayer book. We're not going to. We're just going to speak to him about Gold Mask. And then we're going to speak to Gold Mask. Exhaust his dialogue, quote unquote. And um, that'll be us for just now. Uh, to just talk a little bit more about the Star Fists. Um, the Star Fist, you really the way of using it is you put Crag Blade on it and then spam charged R2s. And it can stagger things so easily. Um... And it attacks so quickly and it can deal bleed. It's so it's so versatile. Yeah, the star fists are very, very fucking cool. Obviously, no fucking range. Now, if you want to do these drop downs a little bit safer, you could have put the cat ring on. Um, but it kind of just doesn't really matter, ultimately. Um, so we'll get another smith and stone six. And then I think that's it for the items in this little bit. But yeah, now... I think now we head up the branches towards the Ertree Sanctuary, and along the way, there are some um, Ertree Guardians. Yes. These no, little think... chaps here. Is this the guy wearing the full bloom set? Yes, I yes. Think it is. He is so... wearing the Guardian garb in full bloom. Yes, so the Guardians uh, have two separate armor set. Is it altered? Is the full bloom one the altered set, or is it... No, it's literally called the Guardian garb in full bloom. Okay, so you could, they can drop the Guardian set, so that's the four pieces, but then they can also have the full bloom version of the chest piece. I don't think there's a full bloom version of the whole armor set. I think it's just the chest piece. It yes, is just correct. the chest piece, yes. And if you're wearing the chest piece, that will make your uh, Crimson Flasks heal, heal you for more. Yeah, and it will only drop off of the ones that have the flowers, so you'll notice that some of them don't. Um, but any of the ones that have the flowers have a chance of dropping the Guardian Garb in full bloom. They can also drop the Guardian Sword Spear, um, yes. the weapon that they're wielding, weapon. and it's a, it is a very, very good weapon, actually. Um, incredibly good on a dexterity build. So, right, so, if you are trying a dex build out, use that. Time for a boss. Um, and this is Godfrey. Uh, now, you could have went back to Grace or not. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, Godfrey's pretty easy given her current setup. Now, granted, I don't think he can be bled and I don't think that he can um, be frostbitten. That doesn't really matter because you can just spam jumping L1s at him. He doesn't do that much damage to the Mimic tier. You do tons of damage to him. Uh, this guy is really... Given this build, really pretty easy. His attacks are easy enough to dodge. It's, yeah, like, just because we're doing so much damage to him, really no issues. You could probably spam Lion's Claw. That's probably going to be your best bet. And that gives us our fourth Talisman Pouch from killing him. So we're just going to put yes. the the gold, the, the Scarab Talisman back on, which very irritatingly is what puts us back into... Uh, overweight status, so then that is why we got the Redan's he headpiece <laughs> off to off Enya when we were buying boss armors. So Using the from Godry there to level up. Yep, more into vigor, very close to sixty now. Inching ever closer. I think more holy grease at this uh, baptismal font. Yep, this area just loading you down with a useless fucking consumable. <laughs> Yeah, look, Gotta death words still exist, but the the thing is, is because yep, we have sacred blade. Sacred blade. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's completely useless. This post made by Sacred Blade Gang. Don't even pick that up. Just let it rot. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 give FromSoft the data that you're even picking up the holy grease. <laughs> so there is items to get, but we're gonna grab this grace first, in case you inexplicably die on on the zero enemies at these at, at the next item run. Now, you may have noticed that we uh, passed an assassin. What you can do is just, if you just stand up here, it can never hit you. So, if you I'm have- I'm glad I showed you this. <laughs> yeah, so if you, have, if you have an issue with these guys, you can just spam probably like Thunderbolt or something at it. That'd probably be the way of killing it. Uh, any yeah. kind of night sorcery. They don't dodge. They will dodge your arrows and stuff, which is a bit fucking annoying. 
Rotten Breath would also do work here. Yeah, but uh, when you see how much damage the Great Stars do, and... <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you yeah. don't need to use the trick, but it is something you can use if this particular Black Nerf Assassin is giving you trouble. That is something you can do, and we wanted to show that. Yeah, like if you're doing a soul level 1 run or something like that. I think now we're going to head back to the... Yeah, back towards the Oatree Sanctuary because there are some items to pick up on the top floor. One of which is kind of a pain in the ass to grab, actually. Yeah, that's true. Don't but it is area is kind big. Of, it's huge. Um, the item that we're going to pick up that is kind of a pain in the ass, this is the Oatree Bow. Um, has an 8 holy damage, so if you want a bow for killing deathbirds, don't know where you would. But if you do, um, that's the tool for that. Some Celestial Dew. God knows why that's here. Um, this item up here looks like you wouldn't be able to grab it, but you can. Yes. You just have to inch your way towards it so you don't fall off, even though we want to. Uh, that Golden Order Principia is going to come in handy um, a little bit later on because there is an incantation that we need from it um, to continue the Noble Gold Masks quest. Yes, correct. Uh, and before we do that, we're just... I think this is the very last part before the boss um, in terms of, like, the so, actual yeah. physical exploration of the area. Um, so there's a couple items. I think there's, a, there's an item to grab, a scarab, and I think this Crucible Knight coming up does drop one of the Crucible Knight incantations. I think... But there's some whole, ugh, more holy grease. Ugh, at this point it's getting it's like it's like fucking arteria leaf now. Isn't it? <laughs> so there is an invisible scarab. Hopefully you have your dagger with um, storm stomp on. But otherwise, yeah, we're just gonna kill this crucible knight using the now very effective method of just bonking this fucker to death. Not even taking the repost, just standing still and pressing L two. And, I mean, for large chunks of the game, you can get by by just pressing L2. Yeah. But, uh... The only, t the only time you ha when he pulls out his little wrist dagger thing, uh, you have to dodge that attack because that will fuck you up. But everything else is fine. I really wish that sort of crucible claw grab was an incantation you could get. Unfortunately, it isn't, but I really wish it was. Oof, jeez, God, that thing, that attack is terrifying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, it's actually the Ash of War for that weapon when we get it eventually, and it hits like a fucking truck. It's very, very good. Apart that one doesn't drop an incantation. That's annoying. Oh well. So we do. So we do have a Storm Stomp dagger, as I'm as, as I'm sure you also have. But yeah, this is uh, the daggers really are the Bidoof of Elden Ring. Um, oh god, I can't believe I missed that one. Apart this one's fast. It is, but there is an area just over there where it kind of loops on itself. Um, you'll see it in a sec there. Oh, right there, yeah. So that would be the optimal spot to grab a barrier of gold, which is the strongest magic-resistant um, incantation in the game. I believe it boosts your magic resistance by 60% when cast. So a bit of an awkward drop-off here, and then this is us getting the Spear of Lansax, or Gransax. The Bolt of Grand Sax, yeah. This is the one and only missable legendary weapon required for the trophy. So if yes. you are doing an All Achievements run, for the love of God, come and pick that up. So we just quit out there. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently that does fuck all, right? Don't quit out there, actually. Just fucking drop down and then run to the grace. <laughs> because one was like, okay, yeah. I'll quit out, drop the aggro, and then warp out but nah immediately it was just like oh there he is bang <laughs> yeah make like make like the item we just picked up and bolt um <laughs> nice thanks so now we're gonna warp back to the queen's bedchamber and now we're gonna do the boss and uh this boss is <laughs> so hilariously easy um uh, because it's just Margit again it's just it's just Margit again uh and we also get Why a fun little summon. you die? <laughs> yeah, so we have the Margit Shackle, which allows you to just pump damage into this fucking thing. 
Um, we are probably just going to spam Ground Slam or Lion's Claw at this thing. But again, you could use Market Shackle and... So you could just use Mar Market Shackle, Blood Flame Blade, um, Wild Strikes. Again, that is probably the way to go. Uh, for whatever reason, I quit out immediately. I'm not really sure why I've done that. Oh, the reason because... is because after the cutscene, it puts you in front of him. If you save quit and re-enter the fog, you're miles away and it gives you a chance to buff and summon the Mimic and do everything you need to do before the fight can start unimpeded. Yes. So, um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, at some point, hit him with the Margit Shackle and then just go to town. Um, again, you'll see his health I, bar disappear. There Jesus it goes. Jesus Christ. So, That's Margit Shackle mental. effectively gave us half the fight for free. <laughs> yeah, to the point where we can't even use the shackle again because he's now below half health and then the shackle doesn't work. Honestly, for the 5,000 rune investment in Limgrave, that w that payoff is absolutely worth it. You spend 5,000 the... runes in Limgrave to absolutely fucking clown on one of the demigods. Ultimately, there just isn't really a whole lot to say about Margit. We've fought him twice already. The Margit shackle makes him so incredibly trivial. Now we have the Mimic tier, as well as all the strategies we were using beforehand, where you can just bleed him and frost him, and just keep him locked to the ground. But there is an interesting thing with Margit, and it's that you can summon Melina for Margit. Um, so just to kind of give you more footage of just showing us how we're kicking his shit in, we can also show you the fact that we're going to have Melina in with him as well. Now, depending on your build, it might actually be worthwhile having Melina, uh, Melina's actually pretty good as a summon, and I don't even really think there's much requirements to for her to even be there. I think she's just always there. Yeah, that's right. Um, as long as you've progressed through the game up to this point, Melina's summon sign will be there. So to talk a little bit about what she can do, she behaves like a Black Knife Assassin. Like her move set is that of a Black Knife Assassin. Um, hopefully you'll get to see a bit of that in action. You'll see her doing the big... Uh, yeah, sort, sort of spirally of, uh... dodges side to side there. Um, she can also summon this sort of phantom Erd tree, which I really hope they make a spell in the DLC. I hope that we get the ability to do that, because it looks really cool. That. Look at it. Ah. God, it looks dope. And it heals you when you're standing near it. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like yeah. Warmth from the Soul series, except it looks a lot cooler. That's sick as fuck. Now, as you can see, uh, having Melina in here has quite massively increased how much health he has. But, you know, again, depending on your build, it very well could be worthwhile having Melina in just as that extra distraction. Well, obviously, the Mimic, I mean, the mimic tier is on full health, basically. Um, probably just because, the you know, the, the great stars give you back health on hit. So it's actually such a fantastic combo to have the great stars plus Mimic tier. There's obviously certain bosses that can out-damage the health regen. I mean, there's plenty of bosses that can, but... Aye, for the most part, it makes the Mimic tier nigh unkillable. So now we have to speak to... <laughs> now we have to speak <laughs> to him, and then we can head up to here. But we can't get into the air tree, because we've got other shit we've got to do before we can do that first. But I think we have to yeah. knock on the air tree for that grace to show up, or did we just pass the grace? I feel like I'm going mental there. You have to interact with the Erd tree, and then the fog gate will reappear. Right, um, yes. Which means then you rest at this grace, you can speak to Melina, and she will hand you the rolled medallion. That's the medallion for the second of the two um, grand lifts, and it's how you access the Forbidden Lands, and by extension, the mountaintops of the giants. Yes, uh, but there is a lot of stuff we need to do first before ever going there. But now... To do Gold Mask's quest, if you're not using uh, a very specific build, you have to use a Larval tier in order to do it. So this is um, a guaranteed loss of a Larval tier for the quest. But basically we have to go to something like 37, 37. in. Yeah, 37 in for an incantation. You know those things that scale with faith? Yeah. It's so Make irritating it to me. Um, you can boost your 
um, intelligence temporarily using a lot of different techniques. So there's headpieces that give you intelligence, there's the talisman that will give you intelligence, which we don't have access to just yet. There's the um, Godric's Great Rune, there's um, the America's Scar Seal that we picked up in Shifra. You have lots of ways to boost your intelligence. Unfortunately for us, we didn't have quite enough to be able to cast this incantation, Law of Regression, without um, respecking, sadly. Yeah, so we went to Turtle Pope to buy Law of Regression, which we got from the Golden Order Principa. Principia, but yeah. And uh, yeah, so now to do this bit of quest, we have to head down to that bit where there's a Crucible Knight that we jumped off for the um, Bolt of Grand Sax. And then, oh God, who did anybody? If did you ever figure this out naturally? Just anybody in the comments? Did you figure this fucking out? You have to do the fucking um, law regression. Explain Wait. what you're doing there. So you walk down, you interact with a statue, um, interact with a message. Sorry, that says um, regression alone reveals secrets which means you've got to use a law of regression after you've read the message, and it will transform the statue of Radigan in front of you into a statue of Marika, because, surprise, surprise, for those of you who didn't know, Radigan is Marika. They're the same person. And so uh, you can come with that knowledge back up here to the Noble Gold Mask. We just save quit there to get rid of the aggro of the NPCs. You tell Gold Mask about this. You are rewarded with the Golden Order Totality, or in other words, the t -pose. Yeah. Corrin, because Gold Mask is wiggling his finger again, which is effectively what Corrin's watching and transcribing. Um, I believe you get another incantation here, Immutable Shield. Um, it's down there in the corner. Yep. And that's their quest finished for the time being. The next time we'll encounter them will be the Mountaintops of the Giants. And with that, we can now spend a second Larval tier to put that fucking travesty of a build right. Yes. It certainly doesn't help that we went the Samurai, which has only 9 intelligence, but frankly I think using the Larval Tears is, it is actually probably less hassle than stacking all that shit up, to be honest, but there you go. Yeah, back it's to, less back hassle, to, but mm, it is fun that you get the vigor. option to do that. Delicious 57 only, Vigor. Mm. Only 3 away. Mm. <laughs> So now we're back at the round table hold, and I guess we're probably just going to try and do the general upgrade everything that you should be doing, sell all your runes, see if you have enough uh, upgrade materials to upgrade your weapon, which we don't. Uh, that is a fucking lot of runes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All of which we picked up in Lindell Royal Capital. There are a shitload of golden runes hidden around that area, as you no yeah. doubt saw in the footage, so... There we go, that's enough is for three levels. <sighs> 60 bigger and now we can start strength dumping yes <laughs> yes now you could that you could indeed dump into arcane that is the other option that is available to you and then if you make your great stars a cult um you get some good scaling but otherwise we just felt that strength is probably just a it's less specialized so now we're going to come to the dung eater we're going to speak to him and he's going to give us the sewer jail key which we're going to need for the the next part, Subterranean Shunning Grounds. And um, I guess there's one more thing we're going to do. Oh no, no, that's it. That is it for this part. That is the build that we're on. And, and I. And okay, there we go. That's Lindell. Done. Join us in part 30, where we're going to be doing Subterranean Shunning Grounds. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.